uh, what we see now is that we see law breaking in terms of medical profession when they wanted to put your HIPAA health information out there on the media and then also with mandates and dictates. Secondly, that I was hearing that um, that the um, information uh, being somewhat in public domain, in other words, through, the, through that special committee or whatever, <coughs> that people would be able to review, the public would be able to have their questions to review data, to review the film, filming. That's what those two things I heard. So one, that it's not going to be intrusive, it's going to protect privacy, that right, and then two, that they would be able to, um, the public would be able to view the, the footage but I guess with the policy of the system. Oh, just oh. sitting in the system and you have this question. All right, so this is what will happen. Anything that the government has, you can get about the Freedom of Information Act right. for you. There's not going to be no open, we're not going to be posting it on cable channel. Um, so Freedom of Information Act can be for you. And then also, there's nobody going to see it but the police department utilization for safety. Mm -hmm. Uh, unless it's foyer or asked for by this body or whoever for uh, for safety or as the I mean, citizen review board can for you any information you want. Excuse me, I can get it. All right, uh, first, Commissioner. Yes, last, last point on that. Adams, when please. you're in the public, there is no bit of privacy when you're on uh, public property. If we have cameras out for safety, there is there is not a right of privacy that people have when it, when things take place in the public. That's why when people commit crimes, they'll ask to see review somebody's doorbell cam to see what um, happened. There is not a right of privacy when you're in a public space. Cool. That is a law. But you talking about? Yeah, no, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah but I'm saying just so people so that it's clear, there is not an expectation of privacy when you're in public property if you're out in the public. That is a law. We cannot say that um, people won't be videotaped breaking the law. Um, hopefully that won't happen, but what we need to do is make people aware that we do have cameras so your actions are being monitored. Exactly. Um, and so that'll happen. And um, you stated that. But there's no... Uh, Commissioner Adams, number I'm one, sorry. thank you. Because we're not doing this tonight either. If my Commissioner husband Adams. was an officer, I wouldn't be making any assumptions about anything having anything to do with public safety because that would be a conflict of interest. But my question is, through the chair, um, uh, will this 175 that will the citizens would be paying from their opera funding come from what was what was given last night towards the general fund? No, this would come. This would be extra money coming from the opera dollars, other than the three million yes. that the council members yes. released last night. That's correct. Yeah. And I would just like to say this if I might. Can we can can this be the last thing oh, okay. Unless no, we have, I keep cutting people off. I am here. Nobody finished right. what they have to say. Because we're not all right. I know I know as the songwriter said, it's been a long time coming, but the change go come. Mm -hmm. We're not doing that tonight. Because you know, I, I, I'm quick. To, I'm quick to say we can do something different because this stuff can go somewhere else. So um, we're gonna let Mr. Little speak. We're gonna let everybody speak who turn to speak, and let's do it diligently and in order. Thank and, you. And I only wanted to say that I'm hearing uh, uh, some good points, information that has value, but. I'd like to ask you to look at this just as if we were talking about buying 10 police cars. Right. You buy the cars first, separately. Then you make the rules about how fast they can go and whether they can chase people and so forth. All we're trying to do here is to uh, get the money in place to buy a system that will be reliable, that's weatherproof, that has the capabilities that the police department needs, and that type of thing. Before they get used, we can come together and talk about our concerns yes. and develop procedures and policy, Absolutely. just like we would if we were doing it for our guns or cars okay. or anything else.
Thank you, Mr. Little. Um, I mean, can I, can I, can I say this real quick? This point? would be a question for you. Yes, let me say this is a point of clarity. This money is not coming from the Whirlpool donation. No. It's totally separate. So let's make sure everybody get the right information on that. It's coming separate. totally separately oh, for the sake of the city commissioner Adams. Please. And that, that's what I wanted clarity on, which was what the question was for. My next question would be, I guess, to you, Chairman Seats, if in fact this will be moving forward to personnel and finance? No, it's going to be moving forward straight to the buck. Okay. Okay. Because I. The vote. Okay. I, I just see it as as a problem. 175000 we just at least $3 million of opera dollars. I mean. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Duncan, you had something you want to say? Yeah, I just I have a question. Yes, sir. Please direct it towards the chair. I will direct it towards the chair. Thank you, sir. Uh, I think you guys intentionally interrupt so people lose their train of thought. And if what you're asking through the chair for us to stop cutting people off, even if they're citizens sitting over here, you see them coming, they got something on their mind, they want to bring it here, they don't want to hear nothing else out of the chair or nobody else, they want to come here and say what they got to say and leave. You want some respect, you get some when you give some. I don't care where you at, it's like that. There was something said about the money wasn't going to through the chair because she said it. She said something to the effect that the money wasn't going to be the same as the other money. I'd like to know what that was. And you can tell me that right now. Yes, right. sir. So the Whirlpool, found the Whirlpool commitment to the city of Ben Harbor is a donation that we're getting every year. For it's what? It's payment of little taxes. Remember, we had a pilot program. They were giving us money on top of the pilot. Every year they were giving us a certain amount that okay. escalated okay. to a certain amount, which was supposed to go to jobs, infrastructure, until the EFM came in and the EFM redirected it towards the pension and other things differently. And well the no the whirlpool whirlpool came in with the harbor shores donation, you're right, I'm sorry. With the world who also came in with the donation also that we negotiated to get payment on the tax. Oh, as a citizen, it's hard trying to keep up with anything you guys say or do. But I understand that we can bring that kind of money in for cameras when the citizens were only asking for uh, dumpsters in every uh Every uh, ward. ward, every ward, and we couldn't get that. But as soon as a large sum of money comes, seems like everybody pounces on it, and it goes straight to straight to our friends. Because I heard y'all call them friends, and they get all the contracts, and they get all the money, and they do shabby work. The streets are shabby. I know Broadway is for certain because we don't have a, a drainage for the water to go down in it. It's like a skating rink out in front of the house. But all of this money, as soon as it comes in, our friends, I'm going to say y'all friends because I don't feel like they're friends to me because anytime somebody stick me in one eye, I'm not going to give them the other eye. And we've been had our ass, both eyes stuck at the same time. And y'all had no power. And the citizens were left where? Then, I'm going to say this and I'm going to be finished. We can get all of this money coming from all of these places. I'm, I'm not saying one place in particular, but I like to. <coughs> to put cameras up all over the city. Let's put them up all over the city and be done with it. 
Let's put those shotgun things you was talking about. Put them all over the city. Let that be done. Let them all pay for this. It shouldn't have to come out of our, our citizens' money at all, since this is the way it's going to be. A police day, let's make the police pay for this. And as far as in here and the police having control over everything and we can't get the citizens to know what's going on because we got to go through whatever you guys said. That should be un that should be illegal. Because the citizens are supposed to see, know, hear, and find out any damn thing we want to find out and not for or whatever you call that shit. For, 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 uh, tell me what the word is. I don't care to hear nothing else. For you. Now I'm finished and you don't have to have no uh, reason to reason to have a problem with me today and nobody else. Because citizens are in trouble and we're not getting what we need. We seniors, we handicapped, we all kind of stuff, can't get a mask. But we're talking about giving up all that money to put some cameras up, all that money to put gun things up, and we can't get a trash can on, in every ward. Uh, we're going to move that forward. Yeah. Okay. Commissioner, Commissioner Henry, if, if those, I don't want to mean to do it like this, but those that want to speak, please, could you come now and speak? Because he, these, uh, and, and the pur purpose why we say through the chair is because a lot of times staff become intimidated by staring or pointing fingers or the direct cussing at staff, and that's unnecessary. I mean, if you have anything that you want to say, you can tell the Commission to the city manager, and we redirect it to the staff. But we don't need staff pumped out or cussed out and all that kind of stuff. And they here not getting the overtime or anything is here uh, trying to do a job. I'd like to ask a question, Thank please. Thank you. Uh, when you said that uh, Whirlpool donation is going towards lowering taxes, and where? Where the taxes will be lowered? Property tax? What kind of tax? Is it a tax that they will assess to pay to the city through the city tax or what? Was, no, the statement was not to lower tax. The statement was that they were paying us a donation payment in lieu of taxes, which means they weren't paying taxes on the project that was built. And so what they did was give us a donation according, according to what they're supposed to be paying. Now I think they've come online, though, and they are paying taxes the world for uh, property is paying taxes now. Uh, so they were paying taxes at first? Whirlpool? What, what do you mean? I, you said this was for taxes. I need to understand fully because it's not clear to me. You say... We gave, we gave World, when Whirlpool built that property, we gave them a tax abatement, which means they didn't pay taxes for when they built the property. I think everybody down here... Was, was it Harvard Shores? I'm sorry. But I thought also we did a whirlpool. We did. Whirlpool campus. Yeah, but it was hard. Whirlpool. Yeah. The three hundred thousand dollars from whirlpool from the whirlpool and the campus. What? What? Well, I'm sure, but then there was a whirlpool agreement. Three hundred thousand from was from from Harvard School. And then we also had a great world. Every year, every year. It started stem from Harbor Shores. Yeah, and it was still in the water. It started off from water. I'll, I'll research it. With it was still Please do, because I'd like to understand. That's what the residents need, is to understand and get a clarity on it. This stuff, that what you been doing since the water came out. Joe Harris was the emergency manager at the time. And so each year, that donation had gone up. And so what um, the former city manager did, because the pension funds were out of whack, that money had been going toward the pension. So it wasn't being used, it was, it was actually going towards the pensions. And so that's where that money lands now. It, it goes toward funding those pensions. And it was supposed to end at a certain amount, at a certain time. I can't remember. I think it should be soon. 24, that money 24. Yeah, 24 it should be, will be ending in a couple of years. They were giving us, giving us, um, it was started off with 200000 then it went from 200000 to three. 
Okay. Thank All you right, for so helping me to understand that. Right, That's because they got busted still in the water. <laughs> this is this is uh, something that we've all been talking about for a long time. So it's a great thing that that uh, we can get these cameras. Um, my question is the technology and all the technology. They can see see your eyeballs. They face recognition. And is any of those new uh, techniques in our cameras. Face recognition and no, iris. Face recognition is not. That's a separate uh, program that has to be uh, acquired and set up to use. <coughs> but this will simply uh, record and, and video uh, the inappropriate activity that's going I think that's a wonderful thing. I'm glad that uh, our, one of our partners is stepping up. But there's a problem. I see that the recovery money is being pinched off little at a time. And, and I do know that the police department got their own money. And I'm wondering why they didn't use their own money to do this. Instead of taking the people's money, um, I just need to. I need to make sure that there is enough money in it to take care of the people's needs. And in in my ward, the people's needs are to stop the backup in the basement, the sewage and water. It's been going on for years. The homeowners that I did lose because of it, they left and went somewhere else. So um, I'm just hoping that I just see little pieces chopped off of that millions of dollars. And uh, I do know that it is it was definitely set in place to help people and government because it allowed us to regroup some of the monies that we had wasn't getting in. But for us to take all the money and not do nothing for the people. So far, nothing except some masks and some sanitizer. So we asked for other masks, and they said we had to have a public hearing because it was part of community block grant money. But we just had, we just gave three million out, and we didn't have a public hearing on that. And that's the same money, federal money. Oh, oh, yeah. That that allowed that allowed the government to be clean, and I understand that you're right. It sure is. It's, it make you feel safe that you that you're in here and you don't have to worry about it. So, I, I just think it's a great thing that we get in the cameras. It's gonna solve a lot of problems. But I really, really looking at the fact that that money is being pinched off and pinch, pinch, pinch. And did public safety get money? From that fund. Well, a lot of people got money off that fund. We should have got the time. Yeah. Well, you know, they think a lot of people have to pay and everything else, and they don't work for the city to pick up. I mean, so I'm, not, wow. I'm with the fact of that we do need to go over and look at this money and do spend it on the people. I mean, we charge people right now. We got lead pipes in the ground. We charge them for water. We, we, we still them do. For water. It. You know, and how can you charge somebody for water they can't use? I mean, you know, we 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 really we really borderline. That's borderline criminal, you know. And, and anybody who sit up and, and act like it ain't, it's a doggone shame when you got people who got testing high lead and you still charge them for anything. We, we should pay them to keep taking the water, you know. But you know, we but then we 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 reward our own, you know. We reward ourselves and we, we fatten up the cat, fatten up the fatten the cat up for ourselves, but the people are the one that gave them money for the people. And so anything you do for the people, I'm with it. I don't have a problem with it. If you want to say the people need more of this and more of that, it's about them. Because without the people, you don't have a city. You don't have a government. 
and and we, we say we're gonna do stuff for the vote time, but if we ain't doing nothing, then we, we all need to take a chin check and look at it because the first person that dies from the airport or anything, we all are liable for it. You know, to give somebody had to pay been working at the house. Yeah. I love that song. He's working at the house. You know, uh, we but we're gonna move on to the next item. Uh, well, I mean, but, but this is what we're gonna this is what we're gonna do with this item. So we'll be all night. Okay. I support the move, but what's not clear is the major point was that the funding if, if the police has a source but, of funding. No, 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 no. They, no. They, they, that has nothing to do with this. We're not, we're not, we already have budgeted the police money out. And to re budget their money or re tell them they got to take this amount of money out of their budget, we already voted on the budget for the police. No, I'm talking about the research. Chairman, the Chairman, 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 If we could just take into consideration the most latest infrastructure portion of uh, the Build Back Better plan that's coming down the pipeline is more money and funding coming towards public safety. And maybe that will just help us to upgrade more, but to take something like that into consideration when something else comes up again. But I've been talking about the cameras for years now and I want to see something happen because we've had children shot and killed in the community and nobody knows anything, so we need some eyes somewhere. All right, so do me a favor, bring this back to talk. with the cameras. Can we have a picture of some of the cameras that we're gonna be voting on? Or a set of the cameras? Uh, I'm just saying bring it back for the full body because I don't want anybody saying they don't have it or don't see it. <coughs> and uh, we're gonna move on to the next item on the agenda. We're gonna move this forward. Does I'm anybody have a problem moving this forward? I have a chair. There was a serious question I had about the public safety getting the same money that we have. And so that is a serious question. That's not anything that I want you to just shine on. It's a question that is coming through the chair. Can somebody answer that question? Because when it comes to me and, and I'm sitting out there, I'm going to have to vote no if I don't get an answer. An answer for what question, to, to you? Police department got money. Was this the same money? You're saying, is this the same money that the police department got? I'm asking if this. The, the police department has no separate money other than what the city budgets. And in certain <coughs> specific instances, small grants to do certain specific things. They, uh, and they, they have no <coughs> pot of money they can reach in. No, no, and but they got a. They got some of that uh, recovery money as well. They sit right here and told us they got it. And I'm like, that's great. And that was for a very limited purpose. <laughs> and when they completed that, that, that was it. It was gone. Thank you. Amendment amend approval of the option of to purchase and develop the multi use project for Harvard Habitat. Could you uh, give us the, a summation of that? I certainly will, sir. You may recall that. Uh, a couple of months back, you approved an option for uh, Harbor Habitat and uh, uh, their partner in the development to develop the site, the property the city owned in the middle of the old Mercy site. At that time, they thought they would be able to purchase, you may recall in this drawing where if you look in your pocket, uh, in your packet, where the blue is around, that's a per, uh, portion that the option was given. For. So we're just amending to give them more property. So I had one more piece on it, right down there on the corner well. Right. To, to, to add, we're amending the resolution. Yes. To add, to purchase and develop city-owned property. Yes. And addition of one more uh, lot. Right, in right. Southern Wells Street. Thank you. Any questions on that? Yes, sir. Please ask all the questions you want to ask concerning that. Thank you. Um, Com Commissioner Henry, oh. then Commissioner Adams. 
Um, would you take Commissioner Adams, please? I'm trying to pull up his document. Uh, I was on a. I thought that we were just exploring, uh, uh, allowing uh, a project like this to be examined. I didn't know that the citizens' dollars, two hundred fifty, or was it three hundred fifty thousand, that saved that property to be utilized for the residents' purpose was going to be just given away. And I read in this document that it would bring in $45 million. I think that's very deceitful in tax dollars. No, it that, would not bring in 40. That's that, the that's amount what of the investment okay. that would be put on the property. Okay, you say investment. Yeah. They're investing $45 million to build on the property. Okay. Do we have specs of what things will look like? Yes, we do. Because I've seen some shabby stuff that has been done in that property, and I agree with what the mayor recently said, was to utilize that property for um, something big and immaculate that speaks to where we've come from and where we're going as a city. And we have Mr. Reed here, and, and we haven't gone over our master plan for a plan like this to even be moving forward. And those are just questions that, that that need to be answered because he stated to me when we were working on other projects before this even was thought about that we needed to do our master plan first. Thank so I need some clarity. Thank, thank you. Listen, let me let me state this real quick. Uh, we're exploring this. We're exploring this option. Okay. For them to develop to add it thank to the master you. plan. This is all just to be added to the master plan. I know we're all frustrated. Mm -hmm. irritated but it just to be added to the master plan i mean this is what uh, we can do we can vote to uh, improve i think that the pictures in this, this document will speak for themselves i mean they're going to do uh brownstone housing they're also going to do uh housing for youth who are homeless uh there's also a proposed grocery store to be built there um, and also single family homes and then they also have said that we're going to name uh, the streets after uh, thankful was for any of the Black History Month, but they were naming after Blacks who have come to our city, who have made a legacy or left a legacy in this community, such as Bassett Brown or anybody else who has not been street named street named after them or whoever, uh, and to honor them okay. with the development and also be able to name some other things after some people in development, but they're willing. What happened was I, myself, went to Habitat for Humanity because of a broken relationship with the city of Benton Harbor and Habitat for Humanity. To see them building in Bridgman, to me, was offensive. Uh, and to build in the township all around us and their headquarters is right in the city. The reason they stopped building is because our taxes were too high. People were losing their Habitat house because our taxes were too high. And then we would add water bills and rubbish and all that, and somebody could not pay the amount to live in that house. So what they did say was if we can give them something like we give uh, people who are living down there by uh, River Terrace, they get a right. break. Uh, you have other people who get breaks for living. And if somebody can own a home mm -hmm. and pay their fair share, I don't see a problem with it, but Ben Harbor is the second highest tax in the state and one of the highest unemployed in the state. And yet, only thing we do is pile on taxes and fees and charge for this, charge for that. I think it's a beautiful idea to be able to get somebody out of a rental into a home they can own. Or a senior citizen, let me close this, a senior citizen who might want to stay in a home, they're going to build a development that a senior might can live in their own home in a smaller place in a better condition. Uh, Chairman Seats, I, I, I was not shooting it down. I remember oh, these conversations very well yeah. and all of that is needed however we need to physically see what some of the homes will look like because we know that in times past what we've seen we want better from habitat and that's not a problem also we we would like to use that old mercy sign and possibly make it mercy district we we uh during that meeting me and mr little and i believe yourself we all agreed that 
uh, the model that they used in the past and not the model that we want. Exactly. We got garages. Exactly. Um, yeah. Battle Creek has a immaculate exactly. uh, habitat home. Yeah. Uh, Lansing has better habitat mm -hmm. homes. Grand Rapids has better habitat mm -hmm. homes. But then us as a body have to go back and change our ordinance. Yeah. Our ordinance does not allow people to build two story homes in the inner city. We changed that under the emergency manager. Just had a young man who built a house on a lot and they gave him uh, all kinds of uh, HEWL trying to get a two story home, which him and his wife were purchasing and building. Mm -hmm. And he had to settle for a single story home because of the ordinance. So we need to fix that. So we need to fix that in order for yeah. us to get what we said we want. Yeah. And on that, this page that's behind the two drawing layout mm -hmm. is a listing that includes just exactly what Commissioner just mentioned. We'll be talking about doing this under a plan unit development. Moving which forward, our zoning code is referred to as plan development. It allows the flexibility for, yes, for, uh, no, wait a minute, you had two, and in the, right behind the two layouts for the property uh, that are in color. Right behind these, uh, these two layouts, there's a page there. All right, and where we mentioned plan unit development, that's a special zoning that takes the parcel mm -hmm. like this, a large parcel, and gives them the flexibility to mix uses. You don't have to have a okay. special zoning right. for commercial, right. a special zoning for single family, right. a special zoning. They can do it all within that. Mm -hmm. And that's what the plan is there. And we said to Habitat, as a matter of fact, before we even did the first option, I went around to visit a number of the habitat homes out in the township and mm -hmm. elsewhere. I looked at it. And I, as Commissioner Sempke said, we're looking for something different and above that. We want something that sets a tone for other developers to look at and want to mirror and follow. Uh, talk to them about making sure that we had double width drives if necessary in order mm -hmm. to keep people from parking on yep. the grass. Yeah. Because one of the things we need to stop is that kind of activity. Yep. And uh, this would be yeah. just the development to do this. And and if I might please, in on this whole subject about the master plan, we need and are in the process of developing a master plan. Mm -hmm. But you hired me as your economic development director, I thought because of my knowledge experience in the past with doing development. What I'm saying to people is this. We're working on a master plan. A master plan will take from a year to two years to complete. In this year to two years, ARPA money is out here right now by the billions and if we reach out and get some and submit plans to take advantage of, we can get it now. But if we take the position, no, we're not going to do anything now. We're going to wait until master plan is finished. The money will be gone. The infrastructure money should start flowing out of Washington within the next 45 days. Mm -hmm. And I would love to be, and in fact, mm -hmm. that's what part of this is about. You saw in there the Ox Creek mm -hmm. project. I've already talked with uh, Congressman up to the last week with a whole committee of us. I've got DNR, Eagle, Drain Commissioner, MDOT, uh, every state agency there is just about, and we're all pulling together on the same to be ready with what we call a shovel-ready project. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. From 50 years of working with the government, I know that's how they operate. Mm -hmm. It funded a city hall for me in East St. Louis back in 1972 uh, because I was ready with a plan <laughs> that built that took the parking lot that we had a bond issue out on, built the city hall on the parking lot, tore the city hall down, and made it the parking lot and 
put the bondholders on it. Uh, so what we wanted to do is get ready, mm. have something so when that money comes free, mm -hmm. and they say, we want cities that have shovel-ready projects to get it here because the president wants his money spent fast. He wants to show what he's doing. Yeah. I want to be in that number for the citizens here in Benton Harbor. And at the same time, we are working with, as a matter of fact, we got a meeting scheduled tomorrow to meet with a group of people, and Mr. McKenna will be there to talk about this planning and development in this project. Uh, the uh, And so I'm just saying they are not in conflict with each other. They're in lockstep. Mr. McKenna came here last September, and I took him around the city, spent an entire afternoon all up and down Ox Creek to show him what we were planning on doing, why we were planning on doing it, and that needs to be built into the master plan. Just like the golf course has to be built in the master plan. Just like Whirlpool's North American headquarters has to be built into the master plan. It's there. It's not going anywhere. Yeah. Okay. And that's what the strategy has to be to plan for mm -hmm. with maximum citizen input the things that we want to have done, but at the same time to take advantage of opportunities that are there now. When we talk about taking care of the citizens' needs, cities are instruments for our citizens to provide them services. Citizens' needs include potholes being fixed, trees being trimmed, uh, how, uh, derelict houses being torn down, new houses being built up, uh, stores and facilities being available uh, for their convenience at a price they can afford. Uh, includes clean water that they can depend on. 18 months from now, when this lead line, we should have the cleanest water in the United States because we'll be one of the first places to be able to set all the lines of that. Yeah. So we're on the right course, and we shouldn't lose track and argue over details. That can cut my church some people talk. I'm glad you see it. Devil's in the details. Yeah, I, I'm just ready to go after all yeah. of that money that we can get to do so, some things. Just a little on that same vein. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and because and, I want all these questions knocked out. One, Sorry. speak on Ox. Give us the the synopsis of Ox Creek, the violation since you already hit that. All right. And also the armory since you already hit that. Then we'll right. go to Dr. Yeah. Times first for questions. Yeah, we'll sure. On on Ox Creek. This is uh, sort of an overview of what we're trying to do. In simple form, what we want to do is have that creek cleaned out all the junk, the, the overgrowth, the shrubbery. There's knotweed in there, which is invasive species that has to be taken out. Uh, we want that, the water in that creek cleaned up. So that if we want to and, and have it deep enough where it can become an extension of that park. Kids can canoe up and down that creek, kayak up and down that creek, fall out of a canoe into the water and not worry about uh, the skin uh, blistering or whatnot because the water's not clean. We want to see fish back in that, in that pond so kids can fish in there and take them home and eat them and feel safe about it. In addition, once we clean the creek itself up and have it where it can be attractive and usable, that railroad right of way that I bought back in 1986 uh, from Conrail, we want to build an elevated, lighted boardwalk bike path that will run from all the way down here on out uh, up that creek out into the township. It crosses under, uh, it crosses there at Napier, right where the cemetery is on this side and the uh, uh, monument place is up on it. Right, right on through there, it runs on out toward where Home Depot is. We used to own it pat right on through the Home Depot property and on out past Townland Road. But now, now we own just about. 
a half a block before you get to uh, Home Depot. And we want to clean all of that up. And then after we've got that boardwalk bike path in there, the other thing we want to do is take, and we've already gotten estimates because this is one of those we put into being ready for show already. We've gotten estimates to go in there and start the cleaning out all of the tires and junk and refrigerators and stuff that's been being dumped for years up and down. We'll need to get right of access from property owners when yeah. we get to the part on the other side of Britain out to M139. From Britain back to Highland, we own most of the property and it's easy for us to give easements to the drain commissioner and the rights for people to go in and clean it out and stuff. But the other part, we're going to have to market that to the property owners to get involved in that. We have University of Michigan right now working, and they worked out on this, which kind of walks through and kind of outlines what I was just talking about a few minutes ago, addressing the environmental injustice problem that exists there from chemicals and stuff that came from uh, uh, that plating, arbor plating, when it was there and uh, flows down through there and all the other junk and stuff that's in there. Uh, we've got involved city. I've got a, a that chart of township working with us, the county, state of Michigan, University of Michigan, Planning Commission, Michigan Gas. How many town parts? And uh, so we, we're doing this and then it's going to create a rendering that will show basically the creek, the boardwalk, bike path, and then I want the rendering to basically just show the property, almost like it was a cow pasture, mm -hmm. so that people in the city and property owners up and down that creek can look and see where their property comes down to there and visualize what's possible. See, a lot of that land, you could build houses, commercial uh, activity on it, uh, businesses, all kinds of things. And we'll need those people to cooperate by giving easements to drain commission to clean up the creek and, and back 50 feet from it. Uh, we'll need right of access for us to send contractors in there to uh, clean out all that stuff, cut out some of the overgrowth and so forth. So we need attractive, developable property, developable property that uses the creek, the, the bike path, and so forth as the view that they look at, that we can build up and make attractive. Uh, that connects to Hall Park also. We want to reconnect, right, that, that creek to Hall Park. We want to restore that baseball field that uh, has been flooded out in the parking area and so forth. And make that a big piece of the redevelopment of the city. That's what Thank we're you. trying to do with that project. Uh, you get on the Army project. Please. The Armory project, basically, the latest update, I think I mentioned not too long ago. The city spent $100,000 back in 2019 that really was not approved. It was HUD money that was not approved. And I've been writing and talking and going back and forth with well, it's been done what, Mr. Little, can you speak to that? I am not exactly sure what it was spent on. I, I do understand that supposedly at that time they did some repairs to some of the windows and to some uh, uh, part of the roof uh, and some other things uh, in there. But then it wasn't protected and there was nothing really to go into it. It was intended to try to prevent further damage. But because it wasn't protected, it's just been the windows, and, you know. And Is there any receipts to that work? I have no idea. No. I've not it's seen it. Have you requested? Can we talk about have several requested, things? Have you requested receipts for that work? No, because I don't even know who did it. We're talking about Chevrolet already. Now we got that millions now. So this basically, what you're talking about is we're going to have to repay that $100,000. We're trying to get out from money. We have to repay, repay it. all of what's transpired and what we're trying to do. I was in the armory this afternoon for about an hour with 20 people 
You may recall about nine months ago, I mentioned to all of you that I had approached the a group called uh, Club Networks um, about doing a uh, teen tech center here, and we were trying to get it in the armory because if we could get something viable in there that helps to pay the gas, the electric, and that kind of thing, I can then get her to release and allow us to use more money to go ahead and finish cleaning it up and getting it back online. Well, today they were in town. We had about 20 people. There were about five or six people from Whirlpool, about three or four people out of Minneapolis from uh, Best Buy that funds uh, the tech centers. There's about 108 of them all around the world, in fact. They're not only in the U.S., they're overseas, too. And uh, we visited this site. We visited the old Charles Gray Rec Center as one possible site. And then we looked at uh, facilities for girl, girl stuff. So we're very hopeful that we're going to get that. And if the location they select is an armory, that's going to give us a chance to get that back up. And we'll start cleaning it up. And so start we want to make that money back. And, 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 and if we can do that, we may not have to do it. That's the first time I heard of that. That's the first time I heard of it. In that similar vein. So that's what we need to do. All that being said, there's questions to from uh, Dr. Tan, and I believe Commissioner Henry has questions, and I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna dismiss myself. I turn it over to the co chair, uh, and uh, I let him with my So I apologize, but I don't want my daughter to not to wait. Mm. I'll be in trouble with her, and I won't be in trouble with her. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to leave about seven to get some prescriptions. <laughs> So it's just right now it's just comments and questions that we're going to go Okay, so just uh, basically three questions. Sir. Um, one is just, um, the, the question is that um, from uh, Commissioner Adam. So this is a purchase by um, Habitat uh, by Humanity. I keep seeing there's like a, a development grant option or a study, so I'm kind of confused. Is this an actual purchase? And then if, um, if it's not a purchase, the county did a program with the um, Harbor of Hope where they had the project under a covenant that they had to keep doing outreach and these things that they said they wanted to do for the property and that they relinquished on that, then it reverts back to the county. So a uh, covenant. So the question of ownership um, is one of the questions because it's a it's a, a plan. It's okay. and the terminology. Not, I guess that's one. Yeah. And then yeah. and I'm I'm supportive of it. So yeah. so we don't forget. Can I answer that one and then go oh. whatever? Okay. In order to develop any project, the developer has to have. You can't get financing unless you've got control of the property. Now, there's several ways to get control. Purchase mm -hmm. it outright, and you have control. If you get an option on it, which says that for this stated period of time, you have the option. Nobody else can get it while you got an option. You can come in at any time there, buy it, and go ahead with your development. That's what's happening here. Just like the corner of Wall Street project that down the street here that's being worked on by MHT, they had to do the same thing. Cornerstone owned that property and they gave them an option. That option gave them control of the property. And from there, they're putting their financing together and so forth. And once that's all approved, they'll buy the property and start building. This is the same thing. Uh, this project, they're trying to be ready for the April 1 tax, Mr. tax credits sale, which provides the financing for DIA to, to doing this. And having this option is a, a, one of the first steps they have to have in place in order to even apply for financing. Okay, so, um, right, because it's, 
I know this plan with the Commissioner Henry and Dr. Seach doing because it knew that back then it was like an app called the African Town the supermarket, laundromat, cleaners, hair salon, barbershop, postal, senior citizen housing. So I, I you know, I'm very supportive of that. And then my only thing to add would be a, I think it comes automatically with a dollar ride uh, stop um, right there for the people. The uh, last two things is one, now in 2010, um, a different mayor from uh, Chicago, something like that was here, a um, city manager. They, we did the youth program and the, and certain youth were um, getting extra pay and they actually went down in some of those areas and helped move those things, those refrigerators and stuff like that. So is that a possibility? Uh, for the uh, Ox Creek project. And then also, uh, I was talking with the mayor that um, about the Lakeman uh, donating money because the project was about trying to do a, a, a CNA program or a nursing assistance program at the armory where they would be making a financial commitment. And could that work alongside with uh, Club Network? Because you had Whirlpool, but uh, Lakeland Spectrum didn't sound like they were at the table. Those are the questions. When this project gets underway, depending upon how the funding is made available, we're going after more than one approach. One approach is the one where we've been talking with a congressman, uh, asking him to try and see if he can get funds dedicated directly from Washington for this project. This project overall, everything done and completed, will probably run somewhere north of 14, 15 million dollars. There's a lot that has to be done in there. Uh, it, it could, it, depending upon what you know they find as they get started and how far it goes. May I ask how many uh nonprofits are involved with all of those that you listed? There are no nonprofits. Okay, involved. I asked that question because I was just recently on a, a Zoom with uh some people from EPA and some other government officials. And there's some funding coming down for nonprofits to actually help with the endeavor of things like Ops Creek. And uh, some of the nonprofits that I'm affiliated with <laughs> will be applying for those. But I don't hear you talking about them because <coughs> why? That's because the way we're trying to approach this on the timeline on which we're approaching it, as well as again, the source, the whole objective of like the infrastructure program, and if it revives again, as you mentioned, the, what's the name of it, the other one that didn't get through that they're still working on. Uh, uh, These are millions of dollars about to come absolutely. down and we're, we're preparing and ourselves. When they do those, yes. they want the stuff set on the timeline, they want specifications put, they want it put out to bid, they want contractors okay, to, that's, the uh, difference. that's what it is. Okay. And there'll be timelines for them to get this work done, just like these people are gonna be doing on this 18 month project with those lead lines. So that's why they're so, offering so nonprofits to, to, so, to apply yeah. for some of these funds. Yeah. So, for those projects. Yeah. Um, those last two questions at the Ox Creek and the youth work, and then I asked you about the uh, Lakeland. Um, those are well, Lakeland's not directly involved in this. We hope as we go along that we'll get as many people on board and support of it as possible. Yes, but I, like I said, this is going to be a project that's going to be set up to use private contractors uh, and, and to go in and get this work done, get it out of the way. And you have one more about you being involved right. with cleaning up, helping with refrigerators. And Ox Creek. Yeah. Yeah. Helping yeah. clean up Ox Creek, that was his other question. Okay. Here's the thing with that. When you start using volunteers. Summer jobs. Uh, this thing, or even summer jobs. Keep in mind that right along with that goes liabilities and so forth. That's why even for our summer youth program this past summer, everybody over 18 had to go over medical exam, drug test, all of that. 
because the city was liable. And if we're using used to do that kind of work can be considered dangerous. It's very easy to, to get hurt on that, something like that. Contractors and, and, and businesses have workers' compensation yeah. insurance yeah. to take care of. So there's no great exposure to the city in that. They are required to have that. That protects us as well as they. Commissioner Henry? Alex said he had to leave at seven o'clock, so I want to get y'all questions answered. No, I, no, Commissioner Adams. No, I wasn't finished though. No, before. Adams. Go ahead. Um, I want to know why we just now, why we just now hearing about hundred thousand dollars owed back to HUD. As Some long as just, I've sit here for just, years, um, so disrespectful. It's the first you that I ask, heard. and you have dominated questions. These people because I'm co-chair. No, I'm actually I'm co-chair, and I'm no, you're not. I didn't. I am a co-chair for this. No, you're year. not. I am co-chair. I am and co -chair. have been for years. Uh, and I asked go ahead. Mr. Little. Um, let's go in order. Go in order. Go in order. Go in order. Thank you. Thank you. I just want I you guys to, to it. Go ahead. And come back to it. Ask the, yeah. Because that's, the, I didn't have anything to do City, with that. Did so. you get all your questions answered? She did. He did. He yeah. did. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, okay. Um, I guess because we on Ox Creek, I have to say that Ox Creek is a, a is another opportunity for residents to get training. They have the time for this shovel ready for us to get them ready to do these jobs. Now, if we don't get them ready, it'll be like what has happened in the past. We could not find anybody that was qualified. And this has been happening for decades. They come right here and sit at this spot and say, we could not find anybody that was qualified to hold a sign up or dig a hole in the ground. So there's some things that we have to do. We, we have to do them, like changing our ordinance for certain things. And this is one of them to make sure that we have the everything we need to make the citizens safe and prosperous. So Ox Creek is another opportunity, but if we don't get the people ready, that money will come and go. And that's the same thing about all of this other money that's here. Although we haven't put some efforts into it, we'll just have to see how it's going to come out for our people. Okay. Um, Uh, for the Mercy Project, um, I'm really glad to hear that we have some options now. Because at first it was just straight up, this is what we want to do, and do you like it? But now we have some options. And uh, so uh, we should definitely have this conversation with our residents. And this is going up in my ward. And uh, I have other commissioners that have come through my ward and said, everybody is uh, for this project. But when I talk to people, I get a different conversation. So uh, I don't know how we're going to handle this shovel ready project, but uh, I hope it's uh, a visual project, something that we can look forward to way ahead of uh, 10 years and 20 years from now, what it would it be like? And that's what I'm looking at. Um, so then I'd like to know where did this other lot come from? When did we find out that Benton Harbor owned an, another piece of that property? All at the same time. We knew we had. We just didn't include it in the first because at that time, the preference was to try to buy the property right in front of it from the people who own it. Since that has not taken place and we needed additional, we're putting that in there. Is there any more property that the city owns in that area? Not in that kind of Not in that. That's it. Okay. 
Um, I just got to say this. It is so disrespectful. When the body comes up here and gives one of our citizens accolades for whatever it is that they did, Bobo Brazil, whatever he did, the body approved that name to be called Bobo Brazil because of who Bobo Brazil was to the community. Same thing while Carl Brown incubator. And then when I hear people calling it, other than that, it's disrespectful to me because we don't have too many African-Americans that have any claim to anything in Benin Arbor. They just started doing that in the last 15, 20 years. So for us to sit here and call it the armory and to call it the 200 pawpaw is very disrespectful. And I thought I'd better say it because some of my citizens have called me and said, what's wrong with you guys? So it's something that we really need to pay attention to and, um, and respect our, our past citizens. They did something that we wanted to put their name on, on, on something that belongs to us. So please start referring to it as the right name. And so we'll know that we did have some pride in Benton Harbor. Um, in, are we considering selling Bobo Museum's center? Leasing out some of the space. Leasing out some of the space. So therefore the other grassroots um, programs will be able to come in. Develop the rest of it as a community center. Put it back to where kids can play basketball, roller skate, do whatever they want to do. And is that on their money? No, no. We'll have to do that. We'll have to do that, but with the money that they're paying for. It's part of the money they're paying for the rents, but most importantly, or equally importantly, they will be paying a significant portion of electricity, water, heat, gas, the things that we weren't able to keep up before when money got tight in the city. And his name is Club Network. Is it any corporation? Actually, it is. It's a, it is an incorporated nonprofit, but it's really Best Buy. And now I believe Whirlpool is going to be supporting this uh, effort. Uh, with the boys and girls you mean Best Buy the, the store? Absolutely. Uh, so Best Buy the store yes. functions and provide. They have 180 of these around the world. Intel, uh, all of the Microsoft. Point of order, please. I'm trying to hear. All companies are involved in, in uh, helping make that government go. So they're going to be there. They provide equipment, they provide money, they provide training and whatnot. It's an alternative for school for kids who aren't destined for a traditional college education, where they can get specialized training on new high-tech equipment that isn't even available to a lot of people. And they, they can become experts in it and learn a high-paying kind of uh, job. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Twice. Twice. Oh, you're not finished. I, I just want you to know that this is really rude. And y'all can it just is. keep on doing it, but lack it's rude. Of, no, like okay, I'm through with it. is very rude. And lack of operating outside of our charter is just as rude. Go ahead, um, Ms. Kamara. Thank you, because so I know he said he has to leave yes, at 7. So, yeah. I, if I can just get it as Go a ahead, resident. I, I know I'm not important. Oh. I, I know you. I, I know, darling. I think. But, um, Mr. Little, I really enjoy what you have put forward in detailing, especially this Ox Creek. Uh, the different events that could take place in putting this together because there's money there. I'm on the brownfield. And there's money there. It's already ready to work. I don't know if it's 
will be enough to complete the whole project of the Ox Creek uh, area. But I think it's a wonderful thing. The one thing that stands out in my mind is you spoke about the knotweed. The Japanese knotweed is one of the most aggressive. And when they introduced it here into the United States, I don't think they had really uh, didn't have a clue. A clue <laughs> as how, how aggressive it is. Yeah. Because we had it in our garden across the street from our main garden. And we had a lady that's a scientist from uh, Bridgman. She came over and worked on it uh, several years. And we're beginning to sort of get a little bit of leverage on that. And things are growing very well. But I was thinking that not, not that uh, nature trail would be so beautiful in part of that area. I worked in the school system there when they had the tech center there. And it was a beautiful area and it would draw so many beautiful things for to make a community healthy. Because you notice that when we were children, probably some of you, we had butterflies everywhere. We don't see those that much. And now the monarch, I see it return just a little bit, and I'd like to see much more of that in our uh, nature, the bees, the different other, the non-aggressive bees. But at any rate, my background with horticulture, I can appreciate there at Ox Creek, I can see some movement now that was taking place. One time you had even, I was speaking of a way to even save money in helping to redevelop that Ox Creek. And that was a great idea too. Anything that we can do as a money saver, but get the job done. And it's something that will hold up for years. I thank you. Is there any I, other questions from citizens? I'd like that. Before ask. Mr. Um, Little Leaves, that want to ask him about some of the things that we just discussed before we move on the agenda. Go ahead, sir. Mr. Little, you were talking about them cleaning up Ox Creek. They're going to clean up all the contaminants that's in Ox Creek to the point where kids could get in it and swim and that's what we're at. And some fish can live in it and that's the that's the that's dream. The that's that's the dream. I I I understand that. I like to see it look like that. Uh, you understand that's a, a what they call it one of those plains where the water could rise up out of there and come on up into the park. There'll be uh, barriers to keep the water from coming up, and all of that's going to be part of the project. We're insisting that they develop recharge areas further upstream to catch and slow that water down so that it doesn't come through there 40 miles an hour and also so that it doesn't run up over the banks and flood our parking lot and our baseball damage. We had a little exchange going even with the state on that where we're talking about this is an overflow. I said, oh no, this is not an overflow area. This is this city's park. It was the city's park years before neglect allowed water to run over and flood it. I said, and not only that, that park, that baseball field has historical significance. That's where House of David played yeah. those, best, those baseball games with those long beards. And yeah, we, 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 we have to play the historical games. Yes. We'll do oh. it. Mm -hmm. but no, ba basically, what I'm saying to you is I understand this business from both ends, the city's ends and the state and federal government's ends. I don't have a problem with fighting for this community to see to it that we get treated the way we should get treated. Because I look just like you. And I picked this as my home and I want it to be right. Okay. Uh, oh, last question. If you want me to, I just no, no, stop. Dr. Times was getting ready to ask a question. No, I was sorry. before Dr. Times. I've been waiting. And oh, y'all act want, like a bunch of little kids. I would I'm so like tired to just know. We were talking about dollar amounts when you mentioned a hundred thousand dollars and for years i've sat here and this is the first i've ever heard after we now you know how i feel back, 
our last hundred thousand dollars to hood i would like the documentation on that because we were set to pay back a certain amount for an allotted amount of time and we finished that up several years ago let me share this with you uh i first found out about it and mentioned it to a couple of the committees mm -hmm. in september i believe it was was the first time because that's when i this okay. happened in 2019. And remember, I just came on board in uh, uh, October 5th, 2020. Uh, or was it? Tw yeah, 2020. And uh, as I worked my way through this stuff, is when I came up on this, where it was pointed out that the environmental review that's required first before you can get approval to do the money was not done. Uh, there was another project where it wasn't done in the system, but it was done manually, and it was okay. That was, I forget the name of the certain project, but in any event, we've been talking back and forth on this and trying to explain what happened. As a matter of fact, I said and wrote part of a response the other night while we were here uh, to what has happened. Okay, explain I, I don't want to hold you up and keep you any longer, All right. but I, I would like to add this. Excuse me. I would like to have you email me and the rest of the commissioners that documentation, please. All right. Thank um, you. I don't think that Mr. Duncan was finishing. My apologies, uh, Mr. Duncan. I was going to re recognize you, and then I, I know that Dr. Thomas had a question. My apologies about about this, because that's definitely my, not my intention. Okay, the only thing Special I was going to say left was I, I, I understand now why, why this whole project is, is being brought forth and uh i like baseball too and i remember the old days when the when the bearded fellows would come out there and play baseball and uh everybody else was happy but us uh the day is coming again might not come for us because we'll be gone but our kids today will have to be still going through the same it's going to be better for them that's 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 our dream. Yeah. Martin Luther King had a dream too, and they killed him. I want to see for the next seventy years us doing something with our own damn stuff, like taking care of our own thing instead of letting all these corporations come in and do whatever they want to do. And speaking of water, I won't mention about our water being stolen, but it was, and nobody wants to talk about that because that's a, they probably told y'all not to. But as a citizen, I can talk about it forever. And I, I will, for all of our sake, keep bringing that up because whenever we're not in control, Guess who is? And they take over our, uh, we couldn't even come in the chambers, but they was in here having meetings. And at the uh, armory, y'all are all up in there. Was any citizens with y'all? Did y'all have on masks, all of y'all? That's a portion through the chair. We all had masks. Good, that's a great thing. Continue that practice. Well, all right, I have one question. Um, you say today you're in the army with 20 other people. Yes. Was any commissioner invited to attend? No. No. What's the reason for that? The reason for that was that was their meeting. We were invited to join. Uh, as I said, they started as Boys and Girls Club. They were in Charles Gray Rec Center as another possibility, and I had offered the armory as a possibility. Mr. Meeks and I were the only two uh, from the city that were there. All right. Was the uh, commissioner did a, a chance to meet these people? No. It's inappropriate at this point. I'm talking about not now, but I'm talking about more before. I'm sure if, they, if it were to go forward, absolutely. Okay. Sure. That's how just a simple question, and it relates actually to page 11, page 12, and page 13, which are low impact development, soft engineering approach, and 
preparing buffer insulation. Since um, we have uh, uh, Emma Kanar, horticulture, and she's from Andrews and all well trained, can local vendors also assist in this uh, project with Oz Creek, you know, with the restoration, beautification, and those type of things? There may be at some point an opportunity for doing things like that. But the initial part of expending whatever we're able to get from the government to get the same to a point to re be ready for that. See, there's a long development process that will take place after the initial cleanup and preparation. Uh, because we hope to see buildings built along there, more recreational activity. Uh, I'd like to see, uh, 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 what do they call it? Uh, Pedestrian walkway yeah. come down Do from the people on C County. Yeah, and going across it with a viewing stand on it and whatnot. There'll be opportunities for all kinds of things in there, and that'll be going on for, for years once it's cleared out and, and set out. Uh, James. James. Yeah. So uh, you mentioned earlier that uh, typically, I guess you meant that nonprofits don't typically have the proper insurances or things no, like that. They, they can't. But they're not uh, typically structured to do that, these kind of projects. No. <clears throat> when you say structure, what do you mean? In other words, they don't have the uh, skilled personnel working for them that would do the driving heavy equipment, uh, trucks. Uh, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, uh, those are typically profit making yeah. operations. Okay. So my question will be uh, I'm sorry, am I supposed to address you? Okay. Um, my question would be Are there any things that don't involve like heavy machinery or anything like that that non privates could be given contracts for? Probably not. And I only say that because. The kinds of things that will be going on will be doing drilling and testing in the laboratory to it's determine crazy. whether you've got contaminants and whatnot. Uh, Is that specialized processes that Eagle and DNR will supervise to make sure that it's properly removed and not just you know disturbed and become a bigger problem. That's one of the things that we've been having some kind of quiet debates about because they're worried about us dredging and possibly digging up contaminants that are supposedly much, much deeper down. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying the kid falls off a canoe in here and his feet sink down eight, ten inches in the sand. I don't want him exposed to something just because it's down farther, you know. Uh, so there's a lot of those kind of things when there'll be specifications written mm -hmm. that have to be met in terms of the work being done. And these people have to put up not only insurance, general public liability, workers' comp, and uh, all of the insurance is necessary. They'll also have to put up bonds, performance bonds, that if they do something and don't do it right, mm -hmm then they either do it over or we call in that bond and they pay to get it done. Nonprofits don't have bonds or whatnot. They don't have any kind of financial wherewithal ordinarily. Now there's some exceptions in the country because there's some major nonprofits uh, uh, that operate hospital chains and all kinds of things. But so, I'm not aware of us having those kind of nonprofits. So if I could be more specific, uh, are there any projects more towards like a uh, later phase in the project where maybe it was something finishing or something that citizens could take part in because another issue I see is typically people don't value things that they don't have a hand in creating, right? Mm -hmm. So towards the end of a project, if citizens could take part in finishing a project and like taking pride in something that they built themselves, like would that be something that's possible? I think there'll be many opportunities. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. That's my question. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Thank you. That's it. That's it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. Mr. Gump, does it go? Yes.